Call to order. This is a special meeting of the Sheboygan Common Council, and as is customary, the quote of the evening will be read by Sue Richards, our city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. I've come to believe that my past failure and frustration were actually laying the foundation for the understandings that create a new level of living. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Here. Balk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Montemayor. Excused. Rinfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. We have a quorum. Uh, Alderman Zurich, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Report of officer. S3-1 by the city clerk submitting a complaint demanding the public removal of Bob Ryan as mayor filed with the city clerk on the evening of October 6, 2009, along with the city attorney's opinion as to whether this submittal constitutes written verified charges brought by a resident taxpayer for purposes of the Wisconsin statutes relating to removal of governmental officers. President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, motion to file based on uh, explanations previously given. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Attorney McLean, would you like to comment first or? If you want me to. Excuse me? I'm just asking okay. Attorney McLean, uh, we have Alderman Rinfleisch asking for your comment on it. Sure. Uh, thank you. I believe all the aldermen have a copy of the uh, memo I provided to uh, the city clerk the day after she provided me with the, uh, the paperwork that had been provided to her demanding the removal of the mayor. Um, when I looked at it, uh, first I was struck by the format of what's the title complaint. And uh, I think it boils down to what these really are, in my view, is a petition submitted by a number of city residents. Um, each of the pages is identical, just with the blank lines, 10 lines on each page to be filled in. Um, it requests removal proceedings, but under the statutes, under 1716 of the Wisconsin statutes, um, the, the statutes require that removals from office for cause under this chapter may be made only upon written verified charges brought by a resident taxpayer of the governmental unit of which the person against whom the charges are filed is an officer. Uh, written verified charges is more than just a petition. Uh, verification requires some sort of acknowledgement, oath or affirmation of the individuals that uh, what they've stated, they declare as true to the best of their knowledge or uh, 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 true to the best of uh, their understanding. These complaint pages, there, there is no verification on there. They're just signatures. And in fact, I would note in some cases, um, they're not even signatures. They're just hand printed uh, names. Uh, so on that basis, uh, and really without going any farther, uh, in my opinion, that does not constitute uh, uh, written verified charges, which uh, gives the council jurisdiction to proceed with removal proceedings. Um, I also looked at the issue of whether or not they're really charges, and I guess what is a charge and what isn't a charge 
is, uh, there's no bright line test for that, but here in these complaints, there really wasn't any conduct alleged at all. It was basically conclusory that the uh, conduct of the mayor, which really was not identified, has caused a scandal. Uh, so I, I think from the standpoint of these being charges, um, these complaints would arguably def be defective, but I guess the bottom line is it, it's not verified. And the statutes require that before the governing body has authority to um, proceed with removal proceedings. Um, so if anybody else has questions, I'd be free to, feel free to answer them. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, in, in reading this petition that was submitted by, uh, I think, some 52, 53 people, I noticed 90 percent of the signatures on here are, are invalid because it could not contain uh, the city, the state, and I don't know if you need a zip code or not. A number of them were printed besides. What I would like to point out, if, uh, and I'm not saying that the people shouldn't take it upon themselves to submit petitions, but what you've done is take up the city attorney's time, you've taken up the uh, city clerk's time, and it seems to me that if these things are to be done, they should be done right. This is an amateur attempt, and I don't know who started it, but anyway, in, in the future, I wish the people would uh, uh, take... Uh, pay more attention uh, to the what they're signing. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. President Kisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, if I may address Steve McLean. Certainly. Thank you. Uh, Steve, it, Attorney McLean, it seems to me your written opinion comes down to the last sentence of the second to the last paragraph of your opinion. That reading as follows. As such, the Common Council should not, indeed, it is without authority to commence removal proceedings. Is that still your, your opinion? That's my opinion, and that's based on the statutory language that says uh, removal proceedings uh, can only be commenced upon filing of a written verified charge. That was, uh, that was the basis of me asking for this document to be filed. Do you agree that based on that particular sentence in the document in front of us, that's an appropriate action? I think think that would be appropriate. Uh, you know, you can treat it as petition, send it to a committee if you wished, but that would be up to the council. Uh, uh, I would not treat it as a qualifying complaint for purposes of removal. Proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? Nothing further. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Balk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kaff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion passes. Document is filed. Resolution introduced. S2-2 by Alderman Gisha and Bulk requesting that Mayor Bob Ryan be officially censured due to the embarrassment his recorded actions have caused the residents of Sheboygan and to the office he now holds. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. This is in follow-up to our last meeting where myself and Alderman Bauk uh, made a promise to bring this to the council. I appreciate that this be called as a special meeting. That was greatly appreciated. Um, it's sometimes easy to sweep things like this kind of quietly. Uh, I appreciate the fact it's being up front at a special meeting that was not, uh, I think that's extra special and, and good for the city that it's being done this public way. I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Alderman Bob. Mayor, I would uh, just reiterate what I said at our last meeting is, is that, and based on counsel from Attorney McLean, what some folks wanted to see done, we don't even have the authority to do. Um, in the world of division of powers, where legislators can do things to executives and uh, their powers are, are separate, 
uh, and there are checks and balances, this is what we can do to send a signal to the mayor that says uh, we disprove of what you did and uh, it's been an embarrassing thing to us and our, our constituents. So I urge uh, the people in this room to support this uh, by voting aye. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Buck. And as I uh, stated myself, um, I will accept this censure with dignity in order to move our city forward. Um, this is uh, not. This does not come to me in a, uh, in a, a manner that I don't deserve. So, in order to move our city forward, to put this chapter behind us, uh, I do accept this, and I hold no animosity toward anybody. Your Honor, if I could, Attorney McLean. Yeah, under the Roberts Roberts Rules of Order, which is really what we're dealing with here, this is disciplinary proceedings of the governing body itself. Um, uh, there's two types of conduct that are covered by the disciplinary provisions of Robert's Rules. One dealing with uh, conduct occurring within the body itself during a meeting and the other is outside the meeting. Uh, those procedures dealing with incidents outside of the conduct of the meeting uh, Robert's rules provide for more due process and opportunity for hearing and that sort of thing. And just so we're clear on the record, it's my understanding that the mayor is willing to waive any rights to any sort of uh, due process hearings. And I'd like to get that on the record. Uh, that is correct. I have waived any, uh, any, any rights in, in order to move this process forward. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I also speak, I think we represent the city of Sheboygan, and uh, so it's not just an action by this body, it's an action by the city of Sheboygan that uh, you take this office very seriously. You've pledged to do that, and you have 48 to 50,000 people who will be watching you. That's um, right. And that's a, that's a big thing to um, put yourself out for. And, um, you know, there'll be times when it'll be more difficult for you to do than others. And just know that uh, everybody's watching and we'll support you. But I, I think it's going to be a, a tough thing to do because everybody will notice wherever you are and make, you know, comments or whatever, make their judgments. So uh, I'd be safe. Just be aware and, aware and uh, do your best. That's bound to uh, keep anybody honest. Yes. Thank you. All the person, Koth. I'm going to pass at this time. Thank you. Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's been suggested by some that a censure is just a slap on the wrist. But I'm here to tell you that I'm sure no one in this council takes it that way. It's no small thing. And I'm sure you don't take it as a small thing either. I think a censure is uh, a big thing, actually. It's uh, very important. It shows the council's displeasure. And uh, I think no one likes to have all his... Uh, people that he works with tell him that they're disappointed in him. So I don't take this lightly, and I'm sure you don't either. And I take uh, great issue with people who say this is just a slap on the fingers or possibly an attempt to sweep it under the carpet. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. <coughs> Any further discussion? None. Roll call, please. <coughs> Balk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Klyunas. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Longman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, S3-3 by the Committee of the Whole, recommending establishing the community budget, goals and objectives, and specific guidelines for the 2010 City of Sheboygan budget. Alderperson Klyunas. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, um, I move that the, we accept the report of the Committee of the Whole and put the resolution 730910 on um, passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Don't get a lot of television coverage for these things, but <clears throat> this is an important step by this council, just as important as other issues and the kind of business that that now we'll be back into doing full time. And I think we're all looking forward to that. This document is entitled, Standing with Our Citizens Looking Beyond Tomorrow. It was put together by the Finance Committee and uh, with input the whole, plus uh, working sessions within the Finance Committee, recognizing 
we have some financial problems, increased tipping fees, increased taxpayer retirement contributions for our employees, reductions in shared revenues, maintenance of effort now to include emergency services, this, uh, continued mediation arbitration restrictions, which makes it virtually impossible for us to be nimble when it comes to our long-term economic conditions. It, uh, the state has dumped their issues on us using, I think, the economy as cover. The economy has not caused our budget problems in the city of Sheboygan. The economy has exposed our budget problems in the city of Sheboygan. And I think this document and the work that's been done via the various committees is dealing with it head on. Just briefly, to highlight what this is, it breaks our budget, unlike the usual paragraph or paragraph and a half, uh, into goals and objectives, long-term goals and objectives, and three specific points uh, dealing with the 2010 budget. Uh, under the goals and objectives, and I'll try to be brief with this, but it's important, I think, for the citizens to understand what this is and what maybe it's hoped to be. The significant, uh, point number one is the significant progress be made before, toward financially sustainable pay and benefit goal of 80% or less of general expenditures. That's gotten a lot of talk in this community, and it's not just words. We have the data to back this up. Uh, Finance Director Hansen would be happy to uh, come up and speak to this if anybody wants more information. Appleton, 75.74% of their budget is pay and benefits. Manitowoc, 71.6%. Janesville, 68.27%. Wausau, 78.69%. Uh, and we are, after STAR, well over 80%. Prior to STAR, about 85%. Uh, pay and benefits. It's just a matter of not being able to be financially sound long term, even though we're a service industry, and that's been brought up, but not a lot of service industries has to spend millions on roads, millions on sidewalks, millions on sewers. Uh, not a lot of service industry categories that have those kind of obligations to their citizens. Uh, we believe public safety is a priority item too. <clears throat> However, due to retirement and other reorganization efforts, we believe there's still 3% that can be pulled out of uh, public safety sectors of our budget. Um, they were left alone uh, during the STAR resolution with indication in that resolution that um, we expect that to have that, this type of look. This wasn't a surprise, this was telegraphed in the STAR. Item three, neighborhood needs throughout the city. We feel special attention is warranted in increasing inspections and expanding code enforcement. And from what I understand with the budget, there's a great component that will have to do with landlords and things like that should, should help us all. So I think some of that is in the works. Um, we're concerned as a council, it says, about fund balance transfers to kind of fix last minute holes in the budget. There will be some fund balance transfers, the way it kind of works. But to use certain fund balances that may be deemed inappropriate, it's a notation the council will be watching those types of things and expect explanations on them. Uh, we believe our employees are item five, the last item, are of great value to this city and their citizens. They're great people, and uh, I enjoy working with every single one of them. However, we are asking for a formal training program for employees to bring their skill levels up as their pay goes up. And having goals and objectives toward, uh, toward personal development and skills development, so that as they raise in, in uh, step increases and so forth having to do with the city, that uh, their talents raise with it. And I think we've let our employees down over time, and I think the committee did too. We may be asking them for more, but we're not supplying the necessary training that goes along with it. So we think they'll benefit from that, and in turn, in turn the taxpayers will too. Now just briefly going to the three specific guidelines, and they are very brief. We are, we are asking for in this document and expecting a zero tax rate increase for the 2010 budget. Zero. That means the city of Sheboygan, and actually with the calculations and the discussions we had at the Committee of the Whole, will spend, will not raise your tax rate a nickel. But furthermore, based on that, it'll end up that the city's levy, the amount of money we take in and put in the checkbook from the taxpayers, will actually be less. In coffee shop talk, rather than government levy talk, that means we'll spend less in 2010 than we did in 2009, by roughly $110,000. Substantial. That's a big deal, because oftentimes you can play games with lowering the levy and raising this, or increasing the levy and lowering the rate. There are no games. This is saying not only zero tax rate, but based on the calculations that we've done initially with the budget, we're looking at 
the amount that the city takes out their checkbook and writes every year by just over $100,000. Upon passage of this budget, item two of three, the current hiring freeze resolution will be amended and extended to December 31st, 2010, and is further now amended to now include all full part-time and temporary positions. Just gives us all an extra kick at the cat, and frankly, the mayor's office an extra kick at the cat when it comes to expanding that 85% figure. It goes back to our goal of getting down below 80%. Final item, capital improvement program. And I know this is a, an issue with many in the council. I know it's an issue in the mayor's office our crumbling infrastructure, the kind of things that service industries don't have to deal with that we have to balance would be a minimum funding borrowing level of $2 million for 2010. And there was some question regarding the language of a minimum funding borrowing level. We have a cap of $3 million. We set the minimum at $2 million, which establishes a payment for 2010 and beyond of a certain amount based on bond or borrowing level. And if efficiencies and cash can be squeezed out of the budget the, that gives the, the mayor's office with his budget and all his department heads an opportunity to increase that up to $3 million where our statutory cap is. So it gives some flexibility, yet kind of I think makes the point that the council believes that putting uh, money back into the infrastructure, the things our citizens need and use every day of streets and sidewalks and sewers and things like that are of a high priority. So I want to thank the, uh, the mayor's office for working very closely with the committee and committee members on this and the committee the whole for their, their diligence in discussing this. And my hope is, in conclusion, is that we revert back to this document. So often we stick them in a drawer. I'm no different than anybody else. And, and very seldom dust them off. But as we're making decisions throughout the year, back to the title, standing with our citizens, looking beyond tomorrow, that we use this as a guiding document for making decisions through the years. Is it fitting into our goals and objectives for 2010? That can help us all with deciding on how to support or not support various items based on your vote here tonight. So uh, that's it in a nutshell for the citizens. I think the council and the, I thank the council again and the committee of the whole and the finance committee for all their help in putting this together. Well spoken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add that the uh, labor negotiations team led by uh, the acting HR director, Tom Rice, uh, the, the Salary and Grievance Committee has already voted that this document, once it's passed tonight, will be the guiding principles for our labor negotiations for this season as well. And these are being communicated to the collective bargaining unit so that they know that, that, that the labor negotiations team is not authorized to, uh, to engage in bargaining that would result in that percentage of our budget that goes to uh, labor and benefits to that going north. That needs to go south. They would, and that this council will not, will not approve that. Uh, also, it, it sends the signal that this maintenance of effort legislation that Madison put through, we, uh, both the Finance Committee and Salary and Grievance Committee have done their homework, and the, uh, the Fire Department and the Police Department, uh, based on principle number two, are being made aware that, that that doesn't isolate them from certain cuts and that that 3% expectation is still there. So in short, Mr. Mayor, this document, uh, not only uh, will it be referred, but it will be the guiding principles for the negotiation team as we begin negotiating the next contract. Thank you, Alderman Thank you, Bob. Mr. Mayor. If I, may, uh, if I may speak for a moment, uh, uh, our finance director, Terry Hansen, and I have done quite a bit of work on the budget already. Um, and we uh, have Monday as our, as our deadline to have the preliminary budget done. So we have uh, dual coffee pots going and uh, we have the pizza delivery number. And uh, we're, we've been working on it quite diligently and we're going to keep working. Uh, regarding some of our uh, departments, uh, in conversation with our fire department, they have uh, uh, turned in a budget that they, they think uh, that they can meet that 3% goal, 3% reduction, voluntarily, which is, which is a big thing. Uh, for them to voluntarily come in at 3% uh, uh, below last year's budget, and for them to do that voluntarily, even though they are under a perceived maintenance of effort, uh, says a lot for our, for our firefighters and, and for their department. Um, regarding the uh, tax rate increase, 0% tax rate increase, We've been uh, brainstorming on uh, basically setting up a different tax structure for our city. Right now, our city is almost 100% dependent upon property tax for our, for our, our, our government. And we're looking at uh, gearing more toward a fee-for-service type of, uh, type of uh, uh, tax system, whereas uh, in the initial year, and this, of course, will be debated uh, quite, uh, 
uh, loudly. In the initial year, we're looking at lowering our tax rate uh, up to 14%, our property tax rate. It'll be more fair. It will be more, it, we're not increasing our taxes. We will be going more toward a, a fair based system based on services rendered rather than strictly the, uh, the property tax. And uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but in the long run it will, it will benefit our city. When somebody looks at our tax rate and they see that we are in the upper 20% in the state, when we can get that down where our property tax rate is down toward the middle, we look much more appetizing as a community, both for residents and for business. And that's our goal. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of input by the council. It's going to take uh, uh, some, some big uh, brainstorming by the finance committee in particular, but I think we can get there. So uh, I appreciate everybody's work so far to date on the budget. I appreciate everybody coming together tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to putting the uh, recent weeks behind us and working diligently with everybody. Thank you. Now we do have a motion and a second, correct? <clears throat> Any further discussion? Roll call. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunas? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Motion, motion to adjourn in a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.